Welcome to What the F***, currently the least watched program on KMBT Community Access. I will beat the test pattern eventually. Uh, for a preview of tonight's show, we turn to Timothy Walton in our legal department. Timothy, what do we have in store for tonight's show? Good evening, Jim. Tonight on What the F***, we'll learn about a new use for electroshock therapy, especially if one happens to be ugly and is being treated badly at work. We'll also hear about a woman whose life sucks because she's beautiful and therefore gets everything she wants. And newsflash, promiscuous women are more popular with men than with other women. Back to you. Hey, Timothy, thank you very much for joining you at the end of the show. Hey, let's meet our guests, or as they're better known, four folks with nothing better to do on a Saturday morning. In the far chair, she's cuter than a polar bear cub taking a dump on a melting ice floe. It's library worker Jenna Christ. Sitting next to me and wishing she didn't have an acute sense of smell, it's international woman of intrigue, <gasps> Cynthia Gregory. She's so mysterious, Edward Snowden is still trying to get her phone number. You really should give it to him. Anyway, in Why between not? them, it's the host of KMBT's only live show, John Wants Answers, it's John Bink. If probing questions was a trumpet, he'd get blown every time royalty came. <laughs> Finally, joining us from a remote, undisclosed location via Google Hangout, it's attorney at law, Alex Klar. If penetrating insight was a legal technicality, crooks would get off on him. Issue number one, will your mind be boggled by electric beer goggles? Caltech researchers found that people who receive a mild electrical shock deep within the brain ranked people as more attractive than they did before the jolt. Why would anyone want to do this? How we rate the attractiveness of faces is one of the hallmark tasks used to diagnose neurological problems like depression, schizophrenia, or Parkinson's. So, the experiment might be the first step to a non-invasive treatment of those conditions. For more, we turn to the most recent winner of the Miss Universe contest where the judges underwent this treatment before making their decision. <laughs> Miss Indonesia, your comments. <laughs> Yeah, he really doesn't say that much, but he lets he just lets his smile do all the talking for him. Hey Jenna, electric shock for better looking. You buying this or not? Totally. Yeah. But like does that mean that when you get an attraction to someone, it feels like an electric electric shock? Is that like where the feel fire works? No, comes no, from? no. When they literally shock you. No, no, oh. no. I mean like the the opposite. Because like when you do see someone and you're attracted to them, like, you know, whoosh, are like natural shocks going off in your brain. Well, have you ever experienced that? An an, an attraction to somebody instantly. Yes. Did you notice an electric shock? <laughs> well, there was the the blinking lights in the sky. No. Wait, were really? Wait, no. You really should stop taking roofies. <laughs> LSD. No. Whatever it is that you're taking, I just take it again. Cynthia, uh, sh brain shocks making more people more attractive. Well, what do you think? Uh, what do you think of this? Well, it, obviously, yes, this this works because um, why else would we be going to bars and pounding back drinks? I mean, this is kind of like shocking the brain just internally rather than you know through a, right directly into the brain. So, is it really shocking mm -hmm. the brain or numbing your brain? <laughs> Hard to say. Okay, have you have you noticed this? Uh, tingling sensation that Jenna speaks of? No, I haven't, but right before I walked in here, I actually got an electrical shock through the doorknob, and I'm finding you really attractive right now. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll just, uh, you know, uh, let me bring my taser. Anyway, <laughs> hey, John, you're a programmer. You think you can develop an app that would help ugly guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it sounds like people who are happy find people who are attractive, right? For, it's like shock therapy. You're right. happier, and now everyone looks pretty. No, no, no. Shock therapy doesn't make you happy. It just there's, there's reduces certain psychological phenomenon, depression being one of them. Oh. But. If I could develop an app to make people think I'm attractive, I'd be on that. Right. <laughs> okay. Trust me. Okay, but what, what, would the app mean? what would the app be? Flashing lights? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? How about like an app that makes your iPhone shock whoever's holding it? Right, and then you get them to install the app, and then you see an attractive woman, you give that's, her a call, she answers the phone. How do you get someone to install an app that shocks you? <laughs> just, just, call it the, just call it the female orgasm app, because, you know, you know, according to most women, you know, men can't give women an orgasm, so it's all right, right? So you've got to work on it. It's marketing, trust me. Okay. Alex, um, you know, uh, what are the illegal implications of this? 
legal implications. Oh, um, gosh, you always kind of pepper me with these legal questions. Or is it, is it because of my profession? Or it's because of all those books you have behind you. There's law school, and I don't. I didn't think about it from the from the legal standard, but um, uh, no, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's like kind of like hypnotic. It's like those hypnotic glasses you get, right? Those remember when you were a kid and you had those little those things. You wear those things and you're like, you will now date me. It's all <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. Just, yeah. Well, Go here's on. a here's a question for you. Um, does if if this if the implication of the study are correct, does this mean? Uh, Picky people, people who are picky, are more likely to have uh, these brain disorders. Oh, that's kind of a that's kind of a deep question. I had like a funny answer like prepared for this question, but you kind of like are delving into like the psycho psychological and legal ends of this. Thanks, Jim. You give me the serious questions. You give your panelists the funny stuff. Thanks. Thanks well, a lot. <laughs> Well, you're the, supposed to be the smart guy on the panel, right? Oh! <laughs> Smartest. My so attractiveness oh. factor just fell for you. <laughs> you got de shocked. I think that's a later issue. My life sucks because I'm hot. Well, you know, that, that, that's your problem. Okay, well, you know, th 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 then, I'll save, uh, then, I'll, then I'll use your question for the blonde on the panel here. Uh, so, uh, does this mean that picky people are more likely to be crazy and depressed and schizophrenic? I'm not really sure what you mean. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know what, I mean, come on, no, I don't, mm, picky people are more crazy and depressed and whatnot. I'm thinking about all the crazy and depressed people I know. I don't find them to be picky at all, actually. I find them desperate and pathetic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so they'll go for anything. Oh, wait a minute. Picky people are desperate and pathetic, therefore they'll go for anything. They just, they just inverse your Did logic. Did I do that? Yeah, oh, used dear. Inver <laughs> inverse your logic. Okay. <laughs> that must be the blonde in me, like, totally. <laughs> No, it's actually pretty deep. Okay, so, I can't do it. Okay, so so Jenna, if every next time you see a guy coming into a bar with a taser, are you gonna make a run for it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that will be Jim. That's good advice for many situations. There you go. If you see someone with a taser coming at yeah, you, run. There you go. Way. There there you go. Way. Well, see, that's the thing. Maybe the ancient caveman would just bop the woman over the head. Maybe that mm. was it. Maybe that was a play on that. What do you think? That, that's old school tasering. Old school tasering. <laughs> the clubbing is old school tasering. Yeah. Okay, but you're not old school, right? You're you're a modern guy because you don't know how to churn butter. Is that I'm right, a modern John? man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, you'll have the face clubbing app. All right. Shockingly, we are out of time. <laughs> Issue number two: Will your job suck if you're uglier than a truck? Researchers <laughs> from Michigan State Go Wolverines found that employees who were considered unattractive are more likely to be belittled and bullied in the workplace. Quote. Although we like to think we're professional and mature in the workplace, it can be just like high school in many ways, said Brent Scott, one of the study's lead investigators. Researchers found that unattractive workers were treated much more harshly than attractive employees, even when other factors were taken into account, including age, gender, and how long they had worked. The researchers also collected information on how agreeable or friendly the workers were, and the results showed that disagreeable workers, like their unattractive counterparts, were treated more harshly than their co-workers. Shocking, I know. I believe we have some of the research footage here. Yeah, T jump, we'll catch you, ugly guy. Yeah, just the, so we did catch him, just not well. <laughs> Leap of faith there, John. Leap of faith. Okay. John, um, ugly people, ugly people get treated badly at war. You this buying this or not? This is not news. Ugly people get treated badly everywhere. Really? All the time. Elementary school, junior high, high school, college, university, and I'm not talking about experience. Oh, really? <laughs> you're, you're saying I'm you're just, you know, perceptive <laughs> about the plight of the ugly man. <laughs> I don't know. You're 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 emphatic. You know, through all the levels of your life, sounded like it was a based on personal experience. So, so you you, you try to tell me you get treated really well by all your coworkers. I I have had a transformation in the last few years, and I'm treated very well. <laughs> As you can see, I'm very attractive. Okay, <laughs> and modest. I see. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, do, do you have this problem? <laughs> Bosses were getting after me for treating everyone really badly, but they were also ugly. 
<laughs> how, how did you treat them badly? Whips, chains, poking. Oh, wow. Were you, were they paying you to treat them badly? Are we talking about your job at the library or your mm -hmm. moonlighting job over at the uh, leather place? Yes, leather <laughs> place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got to get safe words. I think that's that was your boss's complaint. You needed safe You need yeah. to get safe words before you started. Well, and the ignoring of the safe words. Oh, well. And they would say red and I'd say green and, oh. and it was bad. Oh, okay. So, but are you buying this? Ugly people get treated <laughs> badly at work? Yeah, I mean, sure. And you're treated well at work? <laughs> Relatively speaking, sure. Relative to what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you work in a hot library? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have AC. It's yes, really yes, sad. Yes, the, the Playboy Library. <laughs> <laughs> the Playboy <laughs> Library. Of it. Cynthia, uh, you work in the, as International Woman of Intrigue, you occasionally work in the tech sector. Uh, what's your take on this? Everybody I work with is attractive. Really? Yes. All programmers are attractive? Oh, no, I didn't say I worked with programmers. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Were you responsible All for hiring? Um, of course. Ah. <laughs> so you hired only attractive people? I only hire attractive people because smart and attractive people, actually, I should put those two together because I usually find dumb and ugly go together and smart and attractive <laughs> always go together. Really? Wouldn't you say so, Jim? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say to that. I'm sure uh, Timothy would I agree with me I that smart and attractive go together. I can't form out a word. Uh, I, I didn't I think so. I can't think so, of a word mm, in response I think, to that. But. Yeah, well, you know, they do say that attractive people in the workplace are treated differently. They get promoted um, more quickly. They tend to get higher pay raises. They get the plum assignments. Everybody wants to be around attractive people, and I completely understand that. Would that explain your current career success? Absolutely true. Okay. Yes. Hey, Alex, uh, again, I'm going to throw a lawyer question at you now, cause, uh, <laughs> but uh, does this, if this is true, does this mean that, that we should extend legal protection to the ugly? You know what, Jim, I, I've decided that basically your form of heckling on the show <laughs> is basically to throw these type of, these uh, kind of hard questions at me. What is the societal long-term implications of bullying ugly people at work? Uh, do you think the Constitution affords uh, protection? How do you think Scalia would write in his opinion? <laughs> Thank you. All right, you got back at me because I was uh, filibustering at the last show. Fine. <laughs> I don't think I got an answer to the question, but it's all right. Do you think that ugly people are treated badly at work, Alex? I treat ugly people bad at work. How about oh. that, as a, how about that, Jim? <laughs> okay, that's. I guess I'll leave it at that. Hey. And with that, uh, well, we come to an ugly end to our segment. On to our first break. <laughs> we are back from our first break. Issue number three, can you be so hot that your happiness is shot? A 21-year-old aspiring wrestler claims her stunning good looks have made her life miserable. Dana Adiva told her story on an episode of the MTV documentary series, True Lies. She said she was forced to drop out of school because jealous classmates bullied her and her constant attention has made it harder to get a boyfriend. Poor girl. Of course, on the show she boasted, quote, I can get anything I want and I get treated like a princess. I don't have to be smart because I have my looks. Don't we all? Uh, for our further comment, we turn to a desert rain frog. DRF, your response? That looks like an at at with eyes. I want one of those at my house. I want my own frog. Uh, too bad I don't have a squeaked English translator. Well, <laughs> DRF is not going to be a... We're, Google Translate doesn't translate <laughs> desert frog into English yet, so I don't know what he said. But uh, uh, Cynthia, uh, life is so good looking it sucks. I mean, you can relate to this, right? I can, but I don't ever use my looks for, uh, to get anything I want. I don't try to actually use it to my own advantage. Um, to, to be serious on this one, I, I kind of worry about this uh, this woman. How old is she? She was in 21 her... 21 years 21, old. 21. Old enough so, to drink. Yeah, old enough to drink. So, uh, you know, as a radical feminist, I think she's actually doing herself a disservice by not actually finding a way to be more positive about how she can contribute to the world. She should be not so self-centered. She's going to she's going to have uh, one day those looks are going to fall. But can Everything. She, can she can she, can <laughs> she ugly can she ugly herself a little bit more today so that she, her life is well, more bearable? I don't, I don't think it's about uglying herself up. I think it's about um, because it, external may be pretty, inside is pretty ugly, which I think is really what her source oh, of her problem that's is. That's you think yeah. her problem is. Okay. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Jenna. So uh, you you do have this problem too, right? 
<laughs> so beautiful that everyone just fawns over me. I'm twisting it me. from the last segment. Yes, I yes. just had to make up for it. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on this? I, I agree that it's it's her attitude that's shining forth as a beacon of badness. Okay, so then a, as someone who is excessively pretty, then what is your take? What would your advice be to her to adjust her inner self to match her outer self? How how would she go about doing that? Yes, how would she adjust her attitude so that she would be happier in life? If, oh. her, if the inside of her is all ugly, how would she make the inside of her pretty? I don't know, D do some me time, like... You know, get get some own in her. You know, interests that aren't about the way she looks or the way other people interact with her. You know, like get a hobby. Like, you don't think start, professional wrestling is a hobby? I don't. I don't know. Something that's not all about her, though. You know, start reading some books. Get a book club. I don't know. Just just stop being all about like feed the orphans. Look, look at how beautiful I am. You know, yeah. Like maybe not me centric time, but just like something that's not like. Just about her looks. I don't know where I'm going you with think this. She might it's be all over. She might, you think she might be do better if she hung out with fewer people that did electroshock therapy? <laughs> yeah, that could help. There you go. I don't know. There you go. John, what's your take on this? Uh, yeah, a woman too, so beautiful it hurts. What's your take? I, I think um, she's being a little extreme by saying her life sucks. Because um, this, I mean, but I can understand there being some inconveniences. Um, so... Pretty girls might get hit on quite a bit, and I'm, I'm sure it gets really annoying after a while. Right. So I can sympathize, or oh, I can't relate, but I can sympathize <laughs> to her. You get hit that. on a lot? Um, By guys? <laughs> no. Not that I can pick up on. Okay. Are you hitting on me right now? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, see? Yeah, I can't pick up on that. You can't tell if you're being hit on. That's, that's a problem. All right. Alex, uh, let's see here. Uh, what is your take on this? Uh, she's hot, for sure. Um, you know what? It, it is. I have to say, it is really the world's smallest fiddle I have to play for her. But she does have a point in that. Um, uh, one time, I, you know, guys do get intimidated if women are really super, super hot. I mean, like, like ten plus <laughs> model quality. Like, like one time I was at a bar and I was like dancing on the floor and I was doing my Elaine Bennis dance. And this girl danced over to me, and she was really, really hot. And I freaked out. I seriously freaked out. I, I walked off the dance floor. I was like, why in the world would you be interested in dancing next to me? You're way too hot. So maybe she gets a lot of it. Like, you know, th that's the problem. You know, I, again, it's the world's smallest fiddle. So. Your tiny sympathy violin. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, okay. All right. So we are, speaking of which, that brings us to issue number four. If she's easy, will her friends be queasy? Researchers from Cornell University, Go Cornhuskers, found that women who have many sexual partners are disliked by other women, but men who sleep around are less likely to be judged by their peers. Shocking, I know. Experts believe the behavior has evolved as an attempt to keep relationships safe. And a woman's preference for sexual, less sexually active friends remain even when the female question reported having liberal attitudes to casual sex or slept around themselves. <laughs> Hypocritical bitches. Uh, but you know who sleeps around and everybody loves her? This gal. Aww. 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 Kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Aww. That one cat's sleeping all the time, isn't she? I wonder if they drove that cat. Is it dead? I think they put catnip all over the other cats. <laughs> Boy, when you when you slip a roofie to the kitty, that kitty is out. Anyways, hey John, um, yes. you know, hot whip, hot slutty women uh, don't have as many friends. Are you buying this or not? Um, I think they have a lot of guy friends, probably. Right. Okay. Because um, you know you know the story, guys who have friends that are girls still want to sleep with them. Right. So guys want to be friends with these slutty girls, think they might have a chance. Right. Yeah. Um, but women, yeah. I mean, this is old news. This has kind of been through the ages, right? I, I would A uh, woman who sleeps around is looking looked badly upon by her peers. 
okay. that are female peers. I probably should have started this question with the women on the panel, but uh, so <laughs> sorry about that, John. <laughs> Cynthia, what's your take on this? Uh, your, are your slutty friends ostracized by you? So there, you actually missed, um, probably missed the study that's been coming out. There's a new book out called What Women Want. You might want to read it. Oh, yeah, probably. Um, but it actually talks about some of the evolutionary reasons for why women um, are sleeping around. And actually, they have um, more developed uh, sexuality than men, and um, they actually seek more partners in a way to get more sexual gratis, gratis, gratification. Gratification. I can't say. Gratification. Thank you. That <laughs> word too. Gratification. I'll give you a little bit there. <laughs> I'll need that. Um, so, so actually, probably these women, if from an evolutionary perspective, don't want to be friends with um, women who are getting their getting sexual their, gratification. Getting their dudes. <laughs> yes, getting their dudes because it's competition, right? So there's, there's, there's. You don't want to necessarily be friends with your competition. Are so, you friends with your competition? What competition? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you I'm are the competition. <laughs> oh, snap. oh snap! Oh snap! <laughs> Do you have a lot of female friends? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. As a matter of fact, are you? Are you? Are you? The all are you? Do you disprove the rule? Or are you the exception that proves the rule? Hmm. <laughs> I'll let you ponder that. <laughs> yeah, I have to get that one to, back to you. Jenna, are you buying this? I don't know. It, it shows that misogyny and slut shaming can, you know, be in women as well as men. Is yeah. that what you're telling your girlfriends? Yes. <laughs> Honey, I so slut you. shame you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's the other way around. <laughs> so the other way from the other perspective. Sorry about that, Alex. Uh, do you? Uh, what is your take on this? Uh, yeah, I, I'd agree with the, the the study or or the article's conclusion. Um, yeah, the, the the female friends I've had who I guess quote unquote get around, they seem to have less female friends. Uh, but it's also uh, at their end as well. They say they have nothing, uh, they have nothing of interest that they want in female friends. So, for them, why would they have female? You know, why would they seek out female friends if they're more interested in guys? So, that seems like an obvious point. Really, I just figured it's uh, more of a continuum that it, those values are not exclusive. What is your take on the women who slept around but were still leery of fellow women who slept around? Women who slept around but are leery of other women who are slept yes, around? remember the study held true even if the woman in question all herself slept around, she preferred that her friends not be as sexually active. Oh, because she wants to be the star, right? Yeah. I, you know, I, I guess that's probably the reason. She wants to be the center of attraction when there's a group of guys around. She doesn't want to be competing. This is, I, I think it does have an evolutionary, just like guys want to have as many sexual partners to spread their reproductive seed or something like that. And that's why so. all the dudes are going, yeah, go for it, right? Right, Alex? You go, exactly. dude. Exactly. All right, there you go. Does that sound right? Good job, Alex. Yeah. You didn't build much yes. of the segment. <laughs> I did it. I, I gave a serious answer this time. There you go. We're at the end of the segment. Thank you. And we're back from our second break. Hey, for all of you want to send us comments or questions, uh, you can send us via email or Twitter, and the information will be below somewhere on this lower third covering my bald spot and my open plot. <laughs> so, uh, we are at the third segment of our show, which is our fact-checking segment. This is where we learn where we went wrong during the first two segments of the show. And for that, we join Timothy Walden in our legal department. Hey, Timothy, how did we do tonight? Oh, Jim. You know, we're going to have to take longer than normal to deal with all of the errors that the panel made this evening. Uh, I'll start with Cynthia. Of Cynthia, course. Jim yeah. is not attractive. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how many oh, shots yeah. I got. <laughs> we're going to need a cattle prod for that. <laughs> she might like it, though. Uh, Jim, you need to know... Tasers are not the new tequila. Just buy her a drink. Oh, uh, that's true. Okay. I was just trying to be the more modern guy. Cutting edge of technology. Tequila seems oh, so old uh, school. Speaking of the cutting edge of technology, that email orgasm app, it doesn't work. <laughs> we haven't developed that yet. The email orgasm, no way, man. That's, uh, I think that's spam. I never, I never open up any email that says orgasm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that explains why you didn't reply to me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
That was uh, you? John, John, you really try not to show so much glee when you discuss middle school bullying of weird kids. <laughs> it wasn't glee. It was, it was just extra. It was an extra sense of enthusiasm based on almost a personal experience. <laughs> you can never go home. You can never go home. <laughs> Well, I didn't hear any sympathy for the ugly people. John only has sympathy for celebrities. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I, I actually had sympathy for him, but, you know, I tried to not to overly display it if I out myself as an ugly person. But now... uh, Jenna, you're wrong. You are not buying this. <laughs> 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 How did you know? You know as well as everybody else that everybody gets treated badly at work. It's true. But I, it, I was just lying to cover my shame. But are you the recipient or are you the giver of said treatment? You gotta mix it up. Okay. I've seen her give it here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> we weren't talking about that. Give and you shall receive sevenfold. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I looked up this fact, and you might not be aware, but that was not a desert frog. It wasn't? It was a tribble with a Brazilian wax. <laughs> wow. Here's a question. Who waxed it? It was your video. I thought it said I was it was represented to me as a desert frog. I think it was bones. It was in an email that said have an orgasm. I don't know. I just <laughs> Jenna. <laughs> uh, Alex, the entire show is a subtle form of torture, but you're not in as much pain as the viewing audience. <laughs> You know, I want to hear more about Jenna's dungeon of pain. <laughs> <laughs> we got a minute left to hear about Jenna's. I want to hear more about that. We got a minute left, Call Timothy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, I, I have another problem with something that Alex said. Oh, boy. Listen, that wrestler, she's not hot. And neither was the woman on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You know, the thing is, remember, a few drinks is like a shock to the brain, and the lights are a little low, right, yeah, Alex? That's my theory. <laughs> yeah, the lights were low. Jimmy, even you could have gotten a dance. Ah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> you need a lot of low lights and a lot of alcohol before a woman will dance with me. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh, I'm told we're running, we ran out of time. Hey, thanks guys. And thank you very much to the panel and the crew. Thank you for watching the show instead of the test pattern. Later. <laughs>